Hello everybody, welcome back. This is episode 2 of Spanner Builds, and today we shall be building the B-52, which is the mothership for the X-15 that we built in the last episode. So the plan is still to build the B-52, and then attach the X-15 to the B-52 and fly the mission, as seen in First Man. So, uh, let's see how we get on. I mean, this plane is big. I'm not quite sure how we're going to do the engines. They're quite iconic, so I think we definitely need to do those. Um, but look at this, I mean, wingspan, 185 feet. It's huge, absolutely huge. So, let's hop into Kerbal Space Program and get building.
Okay, here she is after quite a bit of messing around. The B-52 mothership. So, we've got uh, nice composite wings. Lots of wings overlapping other wings. Nice composite tail here. Lots of wings overlapping other wings again. <laughs> got our lovely Frantic Space Agency logo. Because, you know, obviously that's what's going to happen to us. Um... Yeah, pretty happy with this overall. It has turned out to be almost the exact size of a real B-52. So, the width, that's our wingspan, 55.2 metres, that's pretty close. Length of 47.5 metres, also pretty close. I think 48 metres is the real length. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. The only thing I'm not over joyed with the engines I mean these pods are a bit rubbish but I couldn't really do any better than that um, they need to be a bit thinner and longer the engines though I've had to use rapier engines because the turbo fans just weren't powerful enough but they could get us into the air and they could get us up to about 10,000 feet but they couldn't get us any higher and this thing is supposed to be able to fly up to 47,000 feet and indeed we want to be flying at about you know, between 35 and 45,000 feet when we launch the X-15. So the turbo fans just weren't going to cut it, and I think they were really going to struggle if they were lifting the X-15 as well. So we've gone with the rapier engines for now. We might have to swap them out again, maybe for the ramjets. We'll have to see how we go. Uh, so let's take this for a quick spin, uh, just check it all works okay. Uh, yeah, see you on the runway. Okay, here we are on the runway. Let's get a groove on. So for some reason this thing tends to start slipping off to the left. But if you don't start quickly enough, you end up pointing all the way over here. And indeed it's doing it a little bit now. Anyway, there we go. Right, good. So. I believe we should be able to take off at about 80 meters per second. It might even take off all on its own, because you'll notice that everything's kind of raked back a little bit. That would certainly be nice if it did. Oh, the rear wheels are up. I'm just going to pull up a little bit here. There we go. Lovely. Let's get the engine stats up so you can see what's going on. Yeah, let's lock those in place. So it's thrust that's important. The turbo fans that I had on here could only manage, like... Well, they did okay at lift off they did about 100 kilonewtons when they were taking off but very quickly they dropped to sort of 50 and it just wasn't enough to get up to high altitude now we're not going to go up to high altitude this time because it takes forever um, but this thing got it up to about 18,000 meters I think started going very 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 fast um, so that's a bit too high a bit silly but um, did start responding in the way you might expect a B-52 to respond at that altitude, which is to say there wasn't really very much you could do to control it, <laughs> other than throttle down. So uh, let's see what we've got. We've got roll. Roll is kind of slow, but uh, that's to be expected in a B-52. It is a big plane after all. Looks like roll is using the rudder as well. I'm not sure if I can stop it from doing that. Yes, I can. There we go. Oh, and that one too, please. Uh, there we go. No more yawing while rolling. That's good. We've got uh, elevators, which are also kind of slow, but they work. And again, it's a big plane. You wouldn't expect it to be being thrown around, so that's fine. Now we've got the rudder, which also works. So I'm fairly happy with all of this. The rapier engines are actually thrust vectored slightly, so that, I mean that's a little bit silly, but we'll take it. I mean from above you can't tell that they're silly engines, can you? You know, it looks like a B-52. I'm happy with that. Only from below. <laughs> that's why they look a little bit stupid. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's flying quite happily. We're at full thrust. We've got 86 kilonewtons on the engine. Uh, when we go a bit higher and start going faster, the thrust goes up and up and up and up and up, and then you start going insane speeds. So we'll have to throttle down the real thing. 
but yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. So I think all we're going to do is turn around, uh, land, and then uh, I'll start thinking about how to attach the X-15. Under the right wing, I think. I mean, that's going to put us way off balance. So I'm not sure what we're going to do about that. But I will think of something. Maybe a counterweight. Anyway, let me turn this thing around and then I'll join you back in on the final approach. You can laugh at my ridiculously terrible landings because I can't land this thing. Well, we've got the runway in front of us. It's a good sign. It's a shame I can't really see any instruments in this cockpit view. They're all down here. How am I supposed to do this? Well, external view it is. Lock this to uh, chase cam. There we go. That should move with us then. We are very, very, very high. So this plane likes to lift itself up because the wings are angled upwards slightly. Which is by design. Well, as per the original design. And like we saw, we took off at about 80 meters per second, so we probably want to land at about 60. And we touch down. So I'm going to deploy the gear because I don't have any air brakes. <laughs> Completely lost sight of the runway. I'm still there. You can probably just glide all the way in. Mm, we are going too fast. And we are not slowing down fast enough. This means that we've got to be very, very, very gentle on the touchdown, otherwise we're going to bounce and bounce and bounce and bounce and bounce and bounce. So the thing to watch is the descent meter in the top there. We just want to be real slow. Real, oh, five is probably a bit much. Touch it no, oh wow, the bounce is just ridiculous on this thing. We have to go around. Too fast. I don't know if there's anything you can do about the bouncing. I mean, we want to dampen the hell out of it, basically. And we want the springs to be quite weak. I don't know if I trust myself to mess with that, though. I think we'll just try and, we'll just try and land slower. Maybe not crash into that hill. That's a bad idea. Right, I'll see you for the next final approach. <laughs> next time we land, no matter what. Okay, we're not quite straight on the runway, but we're getting there. Let's not make the same mistake again. Let's slow right down. We want to be coming in at like 80 meters per second if we can. Nice and gentle. Well, maybe we'll have to settle for 100 meters per second. <laughs> That's a big shadow. Or a big plane. Oh, there we go. Now we're kind of on a glide slope. Whoa. Uh, too slow, too slow. Okay, 80 is a bit too slow. This is good, we can walk it in on the throttle. I 
We appear to have hit on speed AOA. Oh, maybe not. Whoa, the bounce! Oh, honestly, this landing gear is ridiculous. <laughs> I'm just going to bounce all the way down the runway now. Oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay. That's going to take some practice. <laughs> We're definitely going to need to adjust the damping in the landing gear. <laughs> uh, oh well. Anyway. Um, other than that landing, very successful flight. Quite happy with the B-52. So uh, yes, we'll see you in the next one for attaching the X-15. And we'll just have to see how that goes. I mean, it can't be any worse than this. What a mess. Bye-bye. <laughs>